Welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm recording. I'm alive. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm just, um, I don't know how to, how, to, how to treat this and how to react, but the point is, uh, I do want to get back and, and do this every week. Um, at least at least a little bit at least one video every week uh, of me continuing to play Planescape Torment Because I do want to finish this game and I do want to play this game And I think this is the game that people want to see and we started it and it's interesting uh, For me as well as for you and also What better game is there to play other than this leading up to Baldur's Gate 3 other than Baldur's Gate 2? But I think I've done that one. So yeah, it seems like a good idea. Um yeah, I, I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight in. I have very little idea what the hell is going on and how to play this game. I just had to look up how to quick save and quick load because I haven't played this in three months or so. Um, and I, I just just looking at this a little bit, I already remember where we were a bit, but obviously there's a lot of things that I don't remember, and we're just gonna have to get back into it. Um, and uh, I hope you you'll get back into it with me. I very much hope to maintain the the one one hour a week, but I have no idea, or maybe slightly shorter videos, 40, 50 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on how how I feel and what I could do. Um, I should be able to do that. I just need to push myself to do that. I had so many doubts, so many doubts. I am lucky, very, very lucky to have my wonderful uh, soon-to-be wife um, yell at me to just do it and to just try. And that's what I need to do. That I just needed a shove in that direction. And that's what I'm doing. So we're just going to keep going and see how it goes. I'm not going to talk too much about um, uh, the circumstances that brought us here other than to, other than to tell you that we're okay and we're pushing forward and we're alive and that's all that matters right so let's have fun let's have some fun how do you have fun in this game <laughs> what do you what do you what do you do to have the fun part um this is how you unpause so we were just here and we just got to con I actually looked at the old video because i didn't i was like what did we actually do last time um, I hope the volume levels are okay as well. Please let me know if there's anything in, that needs to be changing or tweaked up or down my voice or anything else. Also, the window is open, so if there's random noises, it's from the window outside. And yes, so we just got the con. He's a fighter mage dude. Uh, and I finally have another inventory to put stuff in, which is really all I need. Uh, he, he's got Dakon's Zerth Blade, which is really cool for me as a person who played Baldur's Gate, because that is a blade in Baldur's Gate that you could play, that you could use, and is very good and well known, and this is the origin of it. It's Dakon's Zerth Blade, yo. Um, and it's really good. It's the plus one, plus one Thako, plus one special to armor class, which is good. He has really good armor class, almost as good as a floating skull. Um... And he has the Unbroken Circle of Zerthamon. He has his old religion and everything, and I'm sure the conversation was really interesting. Can't remember shit, but... Zerthamon's Technic Teachings of Zerthamon, founder of the Githzerai uh, people. Yeah, to use the text as a meaning of focusing the spellcasting abilities. So he is a spellcaster. Uh, mage spellbook. Yeah, and they all look like this, which is terrible because you can't understand shit. Yeah, I don't have a priest yet. So, memorized, level one, level two, and others. Um, <clears throat> scripture of Steel. Like, how do you... Known mage spells and memorized mage spells. Okay. Are you sure you want to remove the spell from the memorized spells? So, these are just ones that I know. It's from right to left, which is very strange to me. I mean, Hebrew is right to left, so I don't mind. But yeah, so power of one, uh, it just gives you strength depending on your class. Yeah, it just gives you strength. Uh, the spell cannot bestow a strength of 21 or greater. The bonus is as follows. Cool, so you just cast this on somebody and... Wait, can you do it on... Or is it just self? No, it's touch. Okay, cool. So this just gives you strength. It's a straight up buff. Uh, you've got Reign of Anger. Um, Nearing Missiles to quickly those... Spell summons a magic missile that strikes its target. No saving throw possible. This is magic missile. This is magic missile. Um, it's like, 
Good good on you that it has a different name to screw with me. Scripture of Steel. Uh, plus one to hit, plus one saving throws to all creatures that are friendly to the caster. This is Bless. Cool. Um, <laughs> cool that you have different names for the same thing. Also, he has a combination of stuff. It's very interesting because he has Scripture. He has Bless as a mage. Supposedly, he's a mage, right? But I guess there's no real... He's He is what he is. He's a fighter mage. He's his unique little snowflake. Um, he has significantly less, no, not significantly less experience, sorry. Significantly less experience than, than, than Mort, but not significantly less experience than that, um, than my, than the nameless one who is a fighter. Um, that is okay. Cool, going back to mage spells. So, Scripture of Steel's Bless, a Submerge of the Will, Submerge the Will. When the Will is submerged, new strength is gained. The gain, the strength to endure and protect adversity with knowing the teachings of the Third Circle... Um, for 12 seconds, cast our magic or protection energy. Okay, cool. It's the other thing. The, the stone skin. It's not stone skin. Is it stone skin? I think it's stone skin. Uh, Vilcor's eyes branded upon the one. Vilcor's short-sightedness becomes the target's vision. Okay, very basic stuff. I would actually, instead of submerge of will, I would actually take bless because that gives buff to everybody. But... He is a mage, which means he has to rest in order to regain his spells. So, this is fine. And cool. So, that's what he has. We talked to Eben Kandarian, I think. Right? Quick save successful. Not yet. Okay. So, yeah, we talked to him. Uh, the Eb Kriknees. You see a slightly stooped old man with a full gray beard and a lion's mane of gray hair. He wears a couple of shoulder guards as armor, and he keeps a helmet nearby. Uh, he smokes a pipe and carries a pouch of tobacco around his waist. He looks pretty strong, and he's but he's a little plump and also appears to have some, some sort of breathing trouble. Well now, aren't you a sight, lad? Never have I seen so many scars blanketing a fellow, like a scar cloak you're wearing. Where are you, uh, where you been? Hanging out in a grain thresher? He laughs. Oh, I'm just jesting with you, lad. No offense meant, and I, no offense meant, and I hope no offense taken. I'm Eb. He extends his hand. Greetings, Eb. His handshake is firm. Now I hereby tender my apologies for the unfair jesting, lad. Hope no hard feelings. Can I buy you a tankard or two of something to smooth the ruffle, uh, to smooth any ruffled feathers? Why not? That's the spirit, lad. Bide a moment. He rises to his feet and heads to the bar. After a moment, he returns to his seat with a pair of tankards. Here you go, lad. Drink up. He takes a massive swallow from his own tankard, puffs on his pipe, and says, What can all Eb do for you on this fine sigil day? I had some questions about this place. Oh, well, I gathered that. Just, uh, just to look at you, I meant... Uh, blurb. Oh, well, I gathered that, just to look at you. I mean, you don't look like you're from around these parts, lad. You look a lot, uh, a little, uh, a little too out of sorts to be a seasoned native. I'm, I'm so out of practice at reading. Screwing up, ah. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm just nervous. Eb chuckles, then takes another drink. So what can I help you with, lad? You need to know the lay of the land, Eb winks. Who are you? Eb Crickney's third measure of the harmonium, now retired and being a tout with one's voice since I don't step as lightly as I might these past two or three decades. He chuckles. Now, lad, who be you, and what trouble might you be in? Third measure of the harmonium? Eb puffs up slightly in pride and gets semi -stern look, a semi-stern look on his face. Aye, third measure of the harmonium. He relaxes a little. Though I haven't served a tour of duty in many a decade, pushing a quill wasn't quite my alley after all the fights and skirmishes I've been in. So I just bide my time keeping tabs on things down here in the hive and helping out a little where I can. And you look like someone who might need a hand. Are you in some kind of trouble, lad? What fights and skirmishes have you been in? Jesus, Eb rolls his eyes more than I can remember, lad. Well, almost more than I can remember, leastwise. I did an all-too-long tour in the blood, in the blood war, uh, that infernal muck-up war of lies on Terrace, far too many years in the Black Centuries War. Eb begins to tick off the wars on his fingers and counts silently to himself. Uh, then there was the Three Plains War and many others. I even took part in the Harmonium War of Liberation. Oh, towards the end there, I was also in the Sigil war City Watch, some could argue that the most dangerous of all, of them all, he laughs loudly. 
The mention of the blood war feels like a cold dagger slipping into your heart. Tell me more of the blood war, then. Ebb sighs, oblivious to your reaction. I, the blood war, the most dangerous family feud this side of the primordial, primordial soup. A mean-spirited mob of fiends on one side, a batch of warmonger fiends on the other. It's the war that creation sparked, and they've, dig they've been digging into each other ever since. Two sets of fiends warring against each other, eh? I, the Tanari, Tanari, vicious killers who care for none but themselves, and the Baetsu, uh, Batezu, Batezu, Batetsu or Batezu, uh, war machine, all for law and order under their infernal rules. The whole mess spills out into other planes from time to time, and it's made the multiverse a less pleasant place to live. I see, I had some other questions. I had. What do you want to know? Do you know someone named Farad? Farad, Ebb frowns, takes the pipe from his mouth. Now, lad, what do you be wanting with a burk like Farad? I think I used to know him. Aye, well, the more is your misfortune, then. Mayhaps forgetting some things is better for you, then. Ebb puffs heavily on his pipe. What do you know of him? Well, now I don't know everything there is to know about old Farad, uh, but I know some of the dark surrounding him. If you've determined, if you're determined to track down that spider and nail him to a wall, then I suppose I could spill some of the chance so you know what you're tangling with. He pauses to tamp his pipe. Farad dug his nest deep into Ragpicker Square not too long ago. We already know where it is. Got a bunch of collectors and gangs together and started what one could, could almost consider a collecting faction, be that as it may. Where can I find him? Well, lad, if you're looking for a Farad, which I would say it's pretty barmy of you, you're a little off the beaten path. You want to be finding Ragpicker's Square. Chant is that Farad set up his keep somewhere in the square. Even an old fellow like me, who's been around the ring a few times, don't know exactly where. I figured that Farad wants to keep the dark on his location dark. If you're all bound and determined to find Farad, go to Rackpicker Square and try to dig up Farad's location for, from some of the locals. Try and be careful about it, since there's plenty in the square that would make a gut harp out of you as soon as... as look at you. As soon as look at you. They look at you. I have some other questions. Um, I'm missing a journal. You're missing a journal! Wow, he speaks a lot. I'm getting Jan Janssen vibes from this person for some reason. Just like, w w when somebody's friendly and does not shut up, that's Jan Janssen to me. Uh, also, if they mention turnips. You're missing a journal. Or is there more to the journal than just pages and words? Otherwise, I can't imagine too many bloods who would bother themselves with letters unless it was really hot and spicy. Not much use for books of learning around here. I don't know where you might find such a thing. Ebb puffs on his pipe. Then he snaps his fingers. But you know, lad, if Farad is the one who scrapes you off the Sigil Street, then he might know the dark of where your stuff is. It's more like, most likely in his larder. If you ask me, a dead man is usually in no position to keep his possessions when the collectors tumble across, tumble across his body. Some other questions. Um, what is this place? You're the Smoldering Corpse Bar, lad. Not a pretty place as some, but it's got its own homespun kind of charm. Who's the smoldering corpse there? Him? Oh, no corpse, lad. No debtor him. Near, near as we can tell, old Ignis is still alive inside that little roast spit. Near as we can figure, anyway. It wrinkles his nose. He can smell damnly awful sometimes, too. Keeps me on the pipe to make sure it doesn't warm its way into my nose, it does. He chuckles. How did he get here? Eb takes a smoke from his pipe for a moment, as if deciding how to phrase the, his comment. Well, well now, lad. Ignis had a smattering of problems and some not slight wizardry magics to boot. And seldom do the two mix well, if you understand me. He liked to... He puffs on his pipes and sm uh, smoke trails up. Well, he liked to burn things, and he started torching places and people, and generally making a bunch of trouble. And... Well, now most of his was going on in the Hive, and I'll be the first to admit that the Hive is not the first place the Harmonium goes to keep Sigil's law. Ebb looks a little shamefaced, a failing on our part since it may be the place where our presence is most needed. So, by the Lady's Reckoning, there was a little street-side justice in the wizardly community. A bunch of tea-leaf readers, hedge wizards, and midwife witches got together and managed to weave a spell that was kind of poetic justice. Ebb gestures with a, his pipe at a figure. So now he sits there and burns. He's still alive, which I don't think they counted on. Hmm. I have some other questions. Um, 
What other places can you recommend? I'm not going to ask about Sigil. Well, Puffsona's Pipe and Studies you. this is perhaps the best kip you could have wandered into from the start, judging by your tattoos. You might be partial to having designs on your body, in which case there's a tattoo salon, a little spyware, uh, spire ward from here. You want to stay away from the Alley of Dangerous Angles if you, um, if you can. Ignis torched that place not long ago, and ever since a bunch of bad bloods have set up their kip in that stretch of desert. Uh, I had some other questions. I think we're good. Nothing, I suppose. Right. Thank you. That was that was nice. So we can talk to Elias. You see a trim, muscular man dressed in clothing that is comparatively drab and mundane compared to the most outfits you've seen in the city. He carries himself with an air of superstitious arrogance. He also looks dramatically out of place here. What do you want? He asks. Who are you? I am Elias, warrior of renown. Surely you've heard of me. Nope. Can it truly be? Can it truly be that none in this town have heard of me or my exploits? Alas, I shall have to prove myself all over again. And here, I had thought my fame had spread across the world. What world are you from? I come from the city of Aliburn on the River Tame. Tima. Surely you have heard of its glories and wonders. No matter, no matter. This place is... Benighted and, uh, benighted and ignorant when it comes to the splendors of true cities. I am told that my land is what is called a prime by the denizens of this city, though a prime of what, I don't know. How did you get here? I was chasing my old foe, the villainous life-shade Tia Tanelel. Tanelel, he pauses, waiting for acknowledgement, and then continues. He conjures his demonic magic and opened himself a... He conjured his demonic magic and opened himself a doorway and hurled himself through it. Before he could flee me entirely, I threw myself after him and found myself here. I get it, you're one of the clueless. He bristles, reddening, and his hand clutches cons convulsively around the hilt of his sword. Clueless, is it? I take offense to your words, Sira, and bid you farewell in the hopes that we should never cross paths again. He turns away from you, still flushed with pride and rage. I just want to ask you some questions. He sighs heavily. And eyes you with disdain. Then be on with it, scarred one. Ask and be done. Who are the patrons of this tavern? The only person I know here is Eb there. I am new to this place, and I do not make it my business to meddle in the affairs of others. Did you have any... I do not believe him. Do you have any further questions for me? Uh, or may I continue to enjoy my solitude? It seems like he's like an adventurer, so he totally does. Uh, well, actually, add some good questions for you first. I'd like to apologize to you. He appears entirely shocked, as if the notion of apologies is aligned him. You wish to apologize? That's what I said. Then, then I suppose, as a point of honor, I must accept your apology. Very well. In return, I offer my apology as well. Let us set the matter aside and speak no more of it. Very well. Could you answer some questions? What knowledge do you seek? <laughs> I do like this game quite a lot. It is very, very nice. There you go. You just... Just offer an apology. Extend an apology. He was being courteous. Very. He, 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 was, he would answer my questions anyway. So that was a very nice person. Even though I offended him. And you know what? I apologize. And that's super awesome and legitimate. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Um, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's just, that's good enough. Uh, Mercy Killer Patron, can you stop moving, dude? Like, O. Or we could talk to O. Let's talk to O. Jesus Christ, okay. Got a lot of reading to do today, guys. You see a man standing stock still. He isn't moving a muscle. On closer examination, it appears that he isn't even breathing, just standing. His eye sockets are empty holes in his face, contained within their bounds as a flat gray light that seems to dance with possibility. Looking into the sockets, the eerie, empty feeling of a limitless void shivers through you, as if you had gazed into a sliver of eternity. The head slowly swivels towards you. You notice that no muscles appear to move under his skin as he turns, and he speaks in a pure, bell-like tone. Well met, Wanderer. You have forgotten again, haven't you? Do you know me, stranger? As he opens his mouth, you get the feeling that, uh, the, that feeling of eternity again. Inside his mouth, you see no tongue, no teeth. It's almost as if the man were a shell surrounding an illimitable expanse. 
I have spoken with you before, and always you forget. Your endless quest to discover yourself ends always in your amnesia. You draw close to the truth and recoil. Let us hope that you have the strength to endure your existence. What do you know of me? How do you know this? I know that you, like a fly, rise up from the wreckage of your old shell, buzz about for a time, and curl up and die at the window of truth. You bumble about the pain, seeking the light without any plan to your actions, and fall exhausted when you fail. You alight to, on others to feed from them um, for a time and move on with no regard to them. I have watched you come here and listen to your words and watched you move away no wiser. Will you learn from your mistake, seeker? I don't like your tone. Who are you? I am O. For some reason, when he speaks his name, it sounds like he's speaking of much more than a single letter, as if the speaking of his name contained untold possibilities and nuances. No human tongue could ever create such a sound. What sort of name is that? It is my name. It is the name of a portion of eternity. I am a letter in the divine alphabet. Understanding me leads to understanding existence. I am writ in the, in the true names of half of everything. My being encompasses truth. I am mathematic, organic, metaphysic. I think you're entirely crazed. So what does that mean? The divine alphabet is writ in the name of everything that exists, from the seed at the heart of the elemental plane, uh, elemental planes to the core of the great beyond. My brothers, sisters, a single word translates into the two in your mind. Uh, Gishwista in German. <laughs> Siblings. Why would he say, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I just went to German for some reason because I'm learning German now and it's really, yeah. But my brothers slash sisters, so your siblings, and I reach across all that is, was, or ever shall be. We are thought and reality and concept and the unimaginable. Tell me about the great beyond. You would not understand. No mortal possibly could. It is beyond the powers of comprehension of all but the most powerful of powers. And once they understand, they move beyond the veil of mortal comprehension. I can explain it in no more than that. Perhaps sometime you will understand. So what are you doing here is the real question. Why, I am watching the ebb and flow of mortality. And what do you see? You mortals are like wasps. You build your lives nests from the slimmest of branches. And when the wind shakes your home slash life free, you seek to sting the wind to death. Instead of realizing your foolish mistakes, attempting to repair the damage you have caused yourselves, and learning from your experience, you bring harm to any who have the, mis who have the misfortune to blunder near you in your time of pain and distress. My advice to you, and to all mortals, stop acting like an insect and start acting sentient. I'll think about it. In the meantime, ask some more questions for me. What is it you wish to know? What was uh, that you were saying about a divine alphabet? Uh, I'm looking for a journal. Let's, let's ask him about the journal. I know where you can find it, but it is not my place to reveal such information. Rest assured, you will find it, as well as the man you seek. Do you know where Farad is? I know where he is. I can give you the only one word, nearby. You will find him in the hive, under a veil of secrecy. That's what all your answers seem to be under as well. Can you give me an answer to another question? What is it you wish to know? Um, have you, well, he's, yeah. Mm, he won't, like, tell me of the patrons of the tavern. The patrons of this place are varied, yet all mortal. Like all mortals, their concerns are limited, with the potential of blossoming into actual truth. I can tell you this, though. You may find a companion dear to your heart here, at least as dear as your heart will allow. I found a con. He's cool. I think I should be insulted, but I'll let that slip. Answer another question, will you? Uh, tell me about yourself. I am O. Yeah. Pleased to meet you, O. What are you? Um, best of luck. Farewell. He ignores you. The certainty that he will continue to ignore you for a time settles on your shoulder, and you have no idea where it came from. Oh, just because I told him... Okay. So, okay. Nothing. Farewell. Okay, well, he... That was okay. I mean, sure. Um, let's talk to Barkus, which is the yeah. Don't you don't have to go around, but okay. You see a leather-skinned man with just a hint of ashen color into his face. His teeth seem sharper than normal, and his eyes are filled to, with the boredom that comes with having seen too much. His voice is nasal and clipped. You again? What do you want this time? What do you mean? 
Yeah, you again. You got a hearing problem or something now? You was in here about 15 years ago, got all bubbed up, smashed up the place, and left a pile of coin that wasn't enough to pay for the damages. So you plucked out your own bleeding eyeball and tells me you'll be back to reclaim it when you got 200 coins together. With 15 years of interest, you got about 500 coins. You got the jig, pal? I got your eye. 500, all right. Um, 500, that's ridiculous. He pauses for a moment, considering that it is. Tell you what, give me 300 and the eye is yours. Did I save before talking to him? Um, it's a deal, here's your money. I'm just gonna do it. Like, he, he's giving me my eye. It's a deal. He produces a darkened, wax-stoppered, wide mouth bottle from his pocket. You hear the sound of liquid sloshing around inside it, along with a heavier, squishier noise. Opening it, the stench of some sort of preservative agent nearly makes you gag. Floating in the viscid muck is an eyeball. You'd better figure out what you want to do with that. Now you've got uh, you've exposed it to the air, you might as well put a pickled egg in the jar for all the good it'll do to you. Make up your mind, Cutter. Pickled egg or not? Uh, watch it rot. Tear out your eyeball and place this one in your socket. Let's do it. I'm fucking doing it. Uh, with a moment's hesitation, you reach into the socket and pop your eye into the palm of your hand. The barton helpfully severs the optic nerve and directs your hand to the jar of goo that sits in the bar. You deposit your eye in the preservative, wrap your fingers around the old one, and slid it into your empty socket. The pain of this entire operation is incredible. After a moment, though, you can feel the optic nerve reattaching itself to this new eye, and suddenly, you're hit by a flash of memory. Awesome. Absorb it. Memory flash. A vast expanse of chaotic, ever-changing wasteland stretching before you, a group of humanoid vultures plummeting towards you, cruel weapons ready to strike, and your own shining blade clutched tight in your fist. Three, th three tufts surround you in the color of an enemy you can't quite place. Long daggers glistened in their hands and the light glints cruelly from their exposed teeth. You glance at your scarred hands and you know that soon they'll be covered in blood. An enormous frog-like creature comes bounding over through under chaos stuff headed for you with a mouthful of teeth. You hurl your javelin th through the shifting matter and pin the creature to a sudden stone plinth. You have recalled some of your lost fighting skills. Proficiency point increased permanently. Cool! I'm gonna, I would love to check it out, but we have to finish this conversation. Hurry it up, will you? I got paying customers. Who are you? I'm Brackus, owner and keeper of this place. What is this place? Didn't you see the sign up front? Didn't you see the burnt burning over the furnace when you came in? It's the smoldering corpse cutter. Best damn bulb house and sigil. At least it's the best damn bulb house in this part of the hive, which makes it one of the best in sigil. Hell, they got fancy places with plants and such in the ladies word, and they got fiendish taverns salted around the rest of the hive, but none of them got the characters of the smoldering corpse. Who is the corpse anyways? Him? Ignis. He used to be a flame wizard, burned down pieces of the hive, and got himself s scragged by a bunch of other mages. You want to know more about him? Go talk to Drusilla down there by the door. Alright. Um... What can you tell me of the patrons here? I don't want to get a point to interfere with the lives of the people who give me their hard-earned jink unless they ask me to. So, over there is Candring, Planeswalker. Uh, he's a good one to talk to about any planeswalking questioning you might have. He's been pretty much everywhere. Down there is Eb, Creekneys, an old Harmonium Basher. Don't hold that against him and the tout. Um, he's got a good heart in him and he knows he knows Sigil up and down. The fiends over there are... Aethelgrin and Tigarian. Word of advice, don't deal with them. They might be low rankers in the fiend hierarchy, but they're still fiends. Then you got Ilquix. Ilquix over there, not trustworthy, and some mercy killers looking for some poor sod. Dakon the Githredi is a mystery to me. Don't know much about him. He don't talk much. Finally, you interested in earning some free bub? Yes. There's a bubber over against the far wall, hanging about in the shadows, who's been trying to work up her courage to slip out without covering her tap. I want you to make sure she doesn't, she don't do that. You do it, you get free bub here for life. I'll do it. Um, answer some questions first. Hurry it up, will ya? I am looking for a job. No, I, I want something to drink. What do you want? We got basic beer for a copper, bitters for two, mead for four. We got water straight from the elemental plane for eight copper. It's funny that water is the most expensive one. 
Uh, we got Oborian Fire Wine and Fire Seeds for 10. Do I need... Don't I need Fire Seeds? Cursed Heart Wine for 8 and Batter's Own Whiskey for 20. What will you have? Nothing. Oh, information. Wait, I want information. Oh. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. How long have we been doing this? 30 minutes. Okay, cool. We're, 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 we're good. Uh, I wanna, I wanna do like a big save because I haven't done that in such a long time. New save. Uh, talk to, to talk to more people. <laughs> um, okay. Mercy killer patron. So I'm just gonna talk to him. You see a lad who barely looks a day over 18. His face seems to betray some tension. Help you, Cutter? Uh, who are you? I'm Caleb. I'm a mercy killer. I'm here with Turner and Liz Turner and Ilisdon Ilsidon to catch my first criminal. Why can't you tell me about the mercy killers? Well, they sorry, I I have to get used to saying that now. Believe that justice is the most important thing in existence. I believe that without justice there is no meaning, and without meaning we might as well go off and kill ourselves. I don't want to kill myself, so I decided justice is the meaning. If you want to know more, you ought to ask one of the other two, uh, or find one of our recruiters. They'll talk your ear off. I might go do that. Answer some questions first. Um, for a collector who goes in a farad, who are your friends here? They're the people that who are here to make sure I don't fall up this assignment. Tarner is the older one. Elsidion, the one who's here to make sure I do the job right and to give me support if I need it. Uh, I hope I won't. You'll be fine, I'm sure. Can't I ask him about what he's... What are you doing? Well, seeing as I'm a new mercy killer, I'm supposed to bring a criminal of justice to show I can handle the field work. I decided I wanted to catch a killer, so we asked around and got told he was going to be here. Still haven't seen him, though. I'm a little nervous, to tell the truth. If you'll excuse me, I really ought to be to get looking at the faces here again. He cranes his neck and looks around the bar. Um... Yeah, okay. Cool. So... Let's talk to Ilquix. You see a short rotund man with a perplexed expression on his face. From the lines in his loose skin, it looks like it's not too uncommon. He carries a flag and a veil that looks like it's in the process of being emptied rapidly. In between swallows, he speaks in a gentle voice, so quiet that you can barely hear his words. Hello, traveler. My name is Ilquix. Can I be of some assistance to you? Greetings. I would like to ask you some questions. What did you want to know, my friend? Who exactly are you? I? I am but a humble man with a slight flowery poetical bent and a tendency towards the supernatural. I regret that I have none of my supplies here, or I should be most, most eager to teach you of the ways of power. Perhaps some later time? Yes, I'd like that. What exactly are you? Who exactly are you? Who, okay, why, why not what exactly are you? I don't know. Um, I just... What can you tell me about this place? Um, why is it two gentlemen, blah, blah, blah. Useful qualities one can possess. Blah, 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 patrons. Yeah. Okay, so since, since there's something else other than, okay, I have other questions, I will now read it. The patrons of this tavern are many and varied. I have spoken with most and find them delightful, with the exception of those creatures of law. He just towards the pair of Abishai standing, um, sitting in the corner. They taint the air with their presence, lending an unwholesome stench to an otherwise pleasant environment. I recommend speaking to Barkies. I understand to... Uh, Barkies. He's the... You know, the Barkies? The Barkey? With the Barkies? Funny? Okay, sorry. Uh, I understand that you cry some aid with the trifling matter. Then we have the O character. I'm still trying to understand him fully. It is quite an undertaking, if I say so myself. Uh, those are the folks of interest here. The others, well, perhaps I'm too discriminating. Why do you despise creatures of law? Ah, a fine question, my friend. My upbringing has been on the chaotic side of the Great Ring. You may speak to Kandirin Ilborn, a misnomer, if ever I heard one, of the plains. He fancies himself a great planeswalker. To return from my digression, I have lived my many years with chaos and find it pleasantly agreeable. To me, the taint of law, as in those creatures there, is reprehensible and tyrannical. If I am to be crushed underfoot, I'd rather it be by an individual than a machine that knows nothing of emotion. I gotta say that I really enjoy the fact that you can both tell the truth and tell a lie, but you have both options. It's really cool. 
that I can decide who I want to be here. And and with deciding who I want to be here, I can also decide who I'm showing off to be. You know, I'm I'm I decide my what my character is feeling, and I decide what my character is showing to the person that she's talking to, which are two very different things. Ninety nine percent of the time, you can only do one of those things. You know, um, and, and and usually they're they they have to be combined. They have to be together, right? Um, you, you say something, and that's the thing that your character is thinking. But here, I really get that choice. And that is really cool. I do like Chaos, but I also understand the, the future of Law. But I'm going to go with uh, agreeing with him that Chaos is awesome. Uh, I don't like the big machine. Ingrid anyway, smiles toothily, his fat cheeks barely moving. To each his own, I say. Did you have more questions? I mean... That would be his answer to anything, it seems, but... Okay, nothing. Farewell. Thank you. Um, I can talk to the other two. Mercy Killer. Then there's these dudes. And then there's... There should be a lady. There's... Oh, she immediately runs up to me. Okay. I'm gonna talk to her. I didn't save, but... Not saving is fine. Let's just live with our consequences. You see someone dressed as a female dustman with a half-empty glass in her right hand. As you knee her, she calls out to you. Um, you, over here, you notice that there's something wrong about her, and your exposure to the dustman leads you to believe that she's just too lively to be a real member of the faction. Approach her. Hey, Cutter, buy a lady a drink? You're not real dustman, are you? Did I click one? No, I clicked two. I clicked two! I meant to click one. Frankie said it's time for you to sell your tab. Pay up. She jumps a little, and her nervous tension becomes full-fledged anxiety. What are you going to do? Ask you to pay up now? Um, I can't afford it. Can you spot me just 10%? I'll um, give it to him and he knows I'll pay the rest. How much do you need? Um, I think about 100 coins to get started on that debt. What? That's a lot of money. Um, I'll lend you the money, but I don't have it. Answer some other questions, will you? Um, what do you want to know? You're not really a dustman, are you? She looks around nervously and seemed to sober right up. Why, um, why do you say that? Because you don't act like a dusty, and you're not offering contracts. In fact, you're taking money in instead of giving it out for that corpse labor they do in the mortuary. She stifles a squeak of terror and hastens to explain. No, 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 I'm not a dustman. I just found these robes in the street and I didn't have enough money to get good clothes and... I heard there was a dustman thief around, but you could probably find him somewhere else in the southwest part of the hive. I saw him, but I hid from him. Please don't hurt me. Give me some money and I'll let you go. I'm not planning on it. You ought to know that you're not pulling it off too well. Now answer some questions. Bro, who are you? Me? I'm Mochi. I'm just like to uh, drink here. And um, she loses her train of thought momentarily. I'm just a person, you know? Hmm. Um, what is this place? Forget it. Tell me something else. <laughs> Who's the burning corpse? Very well. Yeah, she doesn't know anything. So, ask you to pay up now. Yeah, that's it. I don't think so. I'm not a charity. Can you think of another way to pay him? And I would pay, huh? She smiles sadly. You could always, um, kill me. I could, but I'd rather find another solution. She looks at you for a moment longer, swaying where she stands, and then says, um, all right, did you want something else? Yes, some answers. <laughs> Settle your tab. Ask you to pay up. How much do you need? I'll be back with some money. Okay, so... Okay, I'm gonna save. The metal table is scarred with talons, knives, teeth, and the marks of innumerable tavern brawls. Like the air around it, it is warm to the touch. They're just chatting. Uh, the sturdy pile and support the ramshackle. No, you are a rat. The plane is like... No, no. No. I don't know why I bother something, something. Neither do I. These red dot pipes remind you of torture devices. Apparently, they emit, they emit steam. Okay, so we can talk to Mochi, but I want to, um, like, let's, actually, let's just finish this. So, I'm going to quick save, and then talk to her. Pay up, pay up, how much do you need? I'll lend you the money here, take it and pay up now. Lend, I'll never see her again. Um, can you think of another solution? I'll just lend you that money, now go pay up. She pockets your jink. Glances briefly towards the door, almost as if weighing her chances of dashing out. Sighs heavily as she realizes there's no chance, and begins to walk lonely towards the bar. 
Um, my thanks, I suppose. Don't mention it, and don't think about heading for the door until you've paid up. Is she going to slowly move now? I'm going, I'm going. Well, this is exciting. Well, this is exciting. Come on, you keep moving. Go on. Mochai? Oh, I can, I can push her? No. Some money. I'll, I'll bring in some, some more. Just making sure, get moving. Where is he going? Where is... You won't be having trouble with Mochi again. Okay, then friend, you have full bar privileges for free. Anything you want, anytime. Must have been a pretty big tab she ran up. You don't know the half of it. You want a drink now? Set me up. Fire wine and fire seeds. Uh, he passes you a glass of deepest red wine and a handful of bright colored seeds. Stick the seeds in your mouth, he advises, and take a swig of the wine. Don't be surprised when the seeds catch fire. They won't do you any harm. It's a taste like no other. He's right. When you pop a seed into your mouth, it mingles with your saliva and bursts into a tiny flame. You quench it with a swallow of fire wine, and the taste is indescribable. Barky smiles. You want another? Keep him come. You want a drink? No. Uh, okay. Well, nothing. Farewell. Cool. That dealt a lot of damage to me. Uh, just for, just to take damage. Jesus. Hold on, can I, can I just load and not take the damage? Oh no, I was just, I was this low in HP? How, how am I this low in HP? I don't, what? Why do I have this low HP? <sighs> okay. Take and pay up. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, she's gonna go do that. Cool. Um, set me up. Cool. Let's do something else. Heart wine. He passes your glass of cursed, famous heart wine. The bouquet is breathtaking and the wine itself is full-bodied and fruity. The aftertaste leaves nothing to be desired. Made from real razor vine, that is. I wish I knew the secret. The barkeeper nods at the empty glass. You want another? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, cool. We got a thousand experience, I guess. Um, I am, now that I think about it, though, oh, I pressed C. C? J? I? Statistics, S. Okay, cool, right. So, I'm level five. I've already got a lot of experience, but that's, that's the thing that I remember. Once I switch, right? If I switch to a wizard, which is what I wanted to do originally, if I switch to a wizard, that'll be gone to zero, won't it? So I technically want to do that as fast as possible and not do any quests, right? Well, I still don't know how to become a wizard or anything like that. Um, I think it, I think I had the quest for it though. I found the fruit merchant Mabeth told me about, but he doesn't have the herbs I need. He told me that I have to go find a gardener in order to get the herbs I need. I can't imagine I would find a gardener in the hive. So I just need to find a gardener in the hive, which I have no idea where that is. Um, and then Mabeth is the healer lady, and she can teach me how to be a wizard or a cleric or something like that. Um, which I would, I, would, I would take whatever she can, but I don't know where to find the gardener. So yeah, um, I don't know where to find a gardener. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. I mean, you know what? If you feel like it, tell me in the comments. I think I've done this before. <laughs> I think I've asked this before, and I'm not sure if anybody's actually told me before. If you know where to find a gardener, 
Just the gardener. Don't tell me everything. What, what, like... Don't tell me the entire quest. I could look it up online if I want to. Just tell me where the gardener is. Like, where or where to look. You know? Maybe. And maybe I'll do that next time. If we ever get out of this bar and finish talking to everybody. Which is highly unlikely. Um, <laughs> or so it seems. So he told me to also talk to these these Mercy Killer patrons. An iron behemoth, this man is huge. He also seems to have a very keen eye. It misses nothing that transpires around him. It also seems that he has no interest in speaking to you. Uh, I'd like to ask some questions. Hello? The man stares at you as if it were some form of bug. He stares at you, blinking slowly. He turns his head, then dismissing you without speaking a word. Talk to me, I'll have your heart, you lumbering tin... Okay, hello? That's the way you want it. Okay, Q. Quick save, successful. Talk to me, I'll have your heart. You hear a subterranean rumble beginning deep in the man's chest. He lightly strokes his weapon and stares at you with renowned interest. Attack him. Whoa! Oh, 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 shit. <laughs> that was... The sound effect was also perfect. It was like... <laughs> he, he basically... He just thumped me. Insta did. That was perfect. Thank you for thumping my... Boom. You see a grizzled, burly man in spiked armor. He eyes you coolly and slowly, up and down, evaluating you. He pauses for a time on your face, almost as if to jog his memory somehow. He sighs, then, and says, Can I help you with something, friend? Who are you? Me? I'm Tarner. What's with the outfit? It's a uniform of a kind. We're the Red Death. Mercy killers. We're the justice folk. Someone, uh, uh, folks. Someone commits a crime, we bring him to justice. We right wrongs, too. You want to know more? Go talk to one of the recruiters. Fair enough. Answer some questions. Did you recognize me? I thought I did, but those pictures are centuries out of date and the suspect suspect would be dead by now. Teehee, sure. Uh, of course, there are planes and stranger things have happened. Still, if you're the fellow I'm thinking of, it looks like you've served your sentence by means of pain. Why can you tell me about the person you're talking about? Just a particularly brutal criminal, from what I understand. This was, of course, centuries ago. Immense strength, they said. And enough anger to tear the head from a briar war. Uh, not a sod to be messed with. Word is... Uh, word is, he got himself surrounded by a Red Death patrol, escaped through a portal, and hasn't been seen since. He frowns, studying you. They have pictures of him. Uh, take away some of the scars, and you might be related to him. Probably not, though. Sounds like a nasty fellow. Mm-hmm. Um... Sorry, just cleaning my glasses here. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's nothing. That's, there's nothing. None of these are, are interesting, really. Uh, these patrons, there's probably nothing to talk to at all. Yeah. Who are you? Oh, she says something else. This is a woman with a far-off cast of... Uh, to her face, she's not exactly young, nor is she exactly old. Perhaps it's the expression of slight disbelief that's etched across her features. Her features. The expression says that she doesn't believe her senses. When she focuses on you, she speaks sharply, but not angrily. Do you need something? Uh, I'm... Who are you? I'm Kiaris. Kiaris Thorntongue. I'm here with my cousin because my uncle doesn't want me wandering the hive on my own. He doesn't seem to think I'm competent on my own. He may be right. I don't know the city or this plane very well. I'm not from here. I'm from the Prime. The Prime? What's that? She cocks her head and looks at you oddly. The Prime Material Plane? The place where the belief the outer planes are shaped of is born? The world? Stars, moons, and so forth? Belief and reality? I sure hope you know what the Prime is because it's an essential part of the planar knowledge. I knew that. I had some questions. Uh, nothing, thank you. A little bit of information. So, let's just finish this and then try to go in this left direction. Um, because I think we've talked to everybody. Let's try to talk to these guys. They seem nice! Okay. <clears throat> you see a scaled fiend that looks very similar to one standing next to him. In addition to the pierced left ears, both are black-hued and reptilian with bat wings tucked against themselves. This one is missing a tooth on its right side. Ah, Tigarin, it says. Our old friend has returned to pay us a visit. So he has, it's like, so he has, yet his eyes do not gleam so as once they did. What do you suppose brings him back to us? What does bring you back to us, friend? Uh, who are you? Ah, I think time has robbed our companion's memory. You honestly do not recall us, do you? Truly, I am aggrieved. But 
as am I, Tigarian, truly aggrieved. Yet I rest as easy. It has, after all, been many hundreds of years, and we know how the minds of mortals tend to dissipate with age. Ah, well spoken, old friend. We are a pair of Abishai on leave from our current assignments in Bator. I am Tigarin, the Thrice Damned, so named for my ability to find the best in every situation. This is Ethelgrin, who has earned himself no special name, though not for lack of trying. Lack of trying? What do you mean? Athelgrin ignores you as it responds to its companion, and once again, Tegrin, you have cut straight to the truth of the matter, though perhaps it is best not to have earned the sort of notice one bring the name thrice damned must surely have incurred. I have some other questions. Mort whispers to you, boss, I don't like this. They're not supposed to be here. The blood ore hasn't kicked the Celestial's asses bad enough that any fiend can go on furlough. They want something. Tread carefully. In the meantime, Tegrin continues to respond to its companion. In its turn, Targaryen ignores you as it re uh, replies to its comrade. Once again, I maintain that any notice is better than no notice at all. The Abishai turns back to you. Old friend, does this answer your question as to our identities? I suppose it will have to. I have some other questions. Some questions. Perhaps we have some answers. We are certainly eager to aid you, old friend. Uh, what are you doing? What are we doing? Why, it is not perfectly clear, old friend. We are on leave from our beloved assignment, taking to for ourselves some much-needed rest and perhaps inducing some additional recruitment for a glorious cause. Our superiors fully support our presence, to be sure. In a more immediate sense, we are taking our entertainment in this delightful establishment. And, of course, we are celebrating the return of our old friend. However, the stench of the breezes, which occasionally waft the scent of goodness in the door, debases us somewhat, leaving us physically, mentally, and spiritually weaker. Fortunately, the air in this ward of the city carries a delicious tang of pain and supplication. Wouldn't you agree? Again, the fiend smiles broadly at you. They seem like uh, a great couple of guys. I had some other questions. Uh, tell me about the fiends. Uh, as we see it, there's a... As we see it, there are two kinds of fiends. Those who are correct and those who are not. Our side, that of the bots, but... Batezu is correct. The other side, that of the cursed, hated, chaotic Tanari, Tanare, uh, is incorrect and must be exterminated. We hold the Tanari directly responsible for the blood war. Were it not for them, we could have settled the lower plains in peace and wouldn't have all the bother of fighting this wretched war. Nor would the unfortunate spillovers into other plains be such a cause for concern among the Nambi Pambi Dugooders. The Tanari are directly to blame for the multiverse's sad state of affairs. That's not really what I was asking. I want to know what differentiates you from them. The fiend pauses for a moment and then brightens. Ah, yes. You see, we represent law and order. Those who break the law must be punished. If we have no law, we have only anarchy. And surely you can see that what anarchy has done for the abyss. It has spawned horrors beyond imagining. Any excess, uh, excesses the Biatsu state may have indulged in or indulged in are simply to counter the rising tide of chaos represented by the Tanari. We mean no harm to anyone. We just prefer to understand where the boundaries are. I see. I have some other questions. Some questions, yes. Um, looking for a journal. I keep no journals, friend, and I counsel that you should not either. Ask my dear comrade why, and you should receive enlightenment. Very well. Because, friend, it is easy to make mistake and commit a true word to posterity, and and easier still for someone you once trusted, and he shoots a glance full venom of Ethelgrin, to find the word and use it against you. Indeed, it can even lead to actions tantamount to desertion. Leaving or losing a journal can cost you your very existence. Um, boss? I'm more sure than ever that these Burks ain't on the up and up. Sounds to me like they desert it, like they're looking for some angle that'll, ev that'll elevate their status in Beator. You don't want to be talking to him, boss. You don't know what game they're playing, and you could get burnt. Literally. Okay, just a few more questions. Why is that a little floating skull I see? There's a lovely sweet scent of Batorian decay about you, my pretty. Perhaps we should discuss this later. The Abishai returned to his attention to you. Now then, you said you had some questions. Um, no, farewell. Okay. Like, I don't know if there's... I'm, I'm talking to both of them, right? Greetings. To see you again. Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, yeah. Okay. I wasn't really... Yeah, there's not much there. Okay, so. Uh, keep going in this direction. Check it. Check out back rooms. Bam. 
Mm, we are back into it. We're playing Planescape Torment. Yeah, I don't know how long. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to try my best to have a video every week. And I don't know. Things. But that's just what it is. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm kind of excited. And that's good. And uh, yeah. See you next time. Right?